Mr. Merle Haggard is someone who I intend to get to know a little bit better. So I want to say I've reacted to maybe three or four of his songs. There was a Christmas song that I did of his. I forget the name of it, of course. Mama Tribe, classic hag. There's at least three, maybe four, that I've reacted to. He is in the Country Music Hall of Fame. He is definitely someone I need to get to know better. So you're watching me learn. I'm about to learn me some stuff. Get educated up in here. I am currently on the Country Music Hall of Fame website. Very cool website. I do a lot of my learning here. So, Mr. Merle Haggard, what do, what do I know about him? Bakersfield, somewhat of a troubled youth, had some run-ins with the law, uh, did a little bit of time. He was actually pardoned, I don't remember by which president, but he was pardoned, he was doing some time uh, in San Quentin. That's a really, really cool picture of Merle. Very nice picture. Merle was inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame in 94. Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Lou Harris. Covered cabin in a crowded labor camp. Stand out in this memory I Cause my daddy raised a family there with two hard working hands and tried to feed my mama's hungry eyes. Mama's Hungry Eyes is the title song of a forthcoming all-star tribute album to Merle Haggard. He is an exceptional artist whose 35-year music career reflects the joys and heartaches, the triumphs and defeats of a real life, the one being lived by a man we love and admire. Tonight, we bestow on Merle a most prestigious honor, entry into Country Music's Hall of Fame. The world-famous Ryman Auditorium, a longtime home of the Grand Ole Opry, was the location of the first live televised CMA Awards. The year was 1970, and it turned out to be a very busy night for Merle Haggard as he picked up four awards, single, album, male vocalist of the year, and this one, too. The country music entertainer of the year 1970, Merle Haggard! Now flash ahead 24 years and a $10 million renovation to the new Ryman. The historic church-like old interior has received a careful and loving redo. And it was to this setting that Merle returned last July for a crowd-pleasing and critically acclaimed concert. Merle, since 1970, your name has come up a lot on this show. 43 nominations, more than any other male entertainer. Then we and got 12 Merle months Hager. ago, it happened, happened again, when last year's Hall of Fame honoree made this statement. I like that cover there, but Harlan Howard, Ray Price, and Don Gibson, and, and uh, Merle Haggard, all these guys are friends of mine. So if you think I'm going to come in here and uh, accept this award, when all these guys are just as deserving as I am, you're damn right I am. <laughs> He was born on April 6, 1937, and died in 2016. He was born in Bakersfield, California. Again. Merle Haggard stands with the arguable exception of Hank Williams as the single most influential singer-songwriter in country music history. He was one of country music's most versatile artists 
stylistically mining, honky-tonk, blues, jazz, pop, and folk. So he did a lot of ballads. There's an example here, Silver Wings. I haven't heard Silver Wings yet. Um, he had some sly, frisky narratives. It's been a good afternoon. <laughs> I wonder what that one's about. And then he had some semi-autobiographical reflections. Mama Tried, beautiful song. Loved Merle Haggard the day I heard that song. That's some serious soul music right there, Mama Tried. Political commentaries, Rainbow Stew, Working Man Blues. And of course, you wouldn't be a big country superstar if you didn't have a few drinking songs sprinkled in. He had some of those. I think I'll just stay here and drink. I did that one, I reacted to that one. I think I'll just stay here and drink. And sometimes, old PJ kind of feels that way. Not too often, but sometimes, sometimes. So it looks like he was brought up in Bakersfield, Merle Ronald Haggard. He was born poor, but not desperately poor during the depression in Bakersfield, California. Jim was his dad, Flossie was his mom. Uh, they came over from Oklahoma. His dad died of a stroke in 46. Flossie went to work as a bookkeeper, had to take care of the family. She was a Christian, she was very stern. He was a rambunctious kid. He raised all kinds of hell. By his 21st birthday, Haggard had run away from home regularly, been placed in two separate reform schools from which he escaped half a dozen times. He had a lot of energy, worked as a laborer, played guitar and sung it formally. Um, all right, uh, performed throughout Southern California in the clubs, his criminal career culminated in 1957 when drunk and confused he was caught burglarizing a Bakersfield roadhouse. What's going on Merle? What, what was happening Merle? After an attempted escape from the county jail, I gotta give it up. <laughs> Some people go to jail and do their time, you know? They conform. All right, man, I broke into the roadhouse grill. I got $75. I did the crime, they busted me. I'm good, I'm gonna do my six months. Not Merle. <laughs> Merle is like, I'm out. I'm putting a plan together. He didn't waste any time. Merle is like, I am out, get me out of here. So in 1957, drunk and confused, he was caught burglarizing a Bakersfield Roadhouse. After an attempted escape from the county jail, he was sent to San Quentin. That's hard time, people, y'all know. Where, in a final burst of antisocial activity, he got drunk on prison homebrew. If you need the sauce, you're gonna find it. You are going to find it. I hear, I have it on very good authority that the sauce is very good in some prisons. I ain't going there to find out, I'm just saying. I have it on really good authority. He found it. So he got drunk on prison homebrew, landing himself in solitary confinement. They threw him in the hole. Haggard was paroled in 1960, and after a fitful series of odd jobs, he got a regular gig playing bass for Wynn Stewart in Las Vegas. Wynn, as in the hotel? Talk to me, y'all, let me know. Music has saved so many lives. Years later, his friend, the iconic songwriter, Chris Christopherson, called Haggard the most successfully rehabilitated prisoner 
in American history.